Um, chaps, I've invited Al. Um, Al, you're a barber, mate, aren't you? Yes, yeah, it's me, Big Al the Barber. Give a nice yeah, easy yeah. of who I am and what I do. It, it, it's all about that branding, isn't it? <laughs> no, no. So, but no, you contact because obviously you, you, you you do like awareness stuff in your barbers and stuff but basically you try you put you you put your face to your brand about giving a giving a toss about men's mental or well, mental health in general so yeah. i was like do you know what Let, let's let's pull you in because i think i'm quite nosy because being a hairdresser or a barber before the barbers get all stop getting the pitchforks out i could never do your job yeah, I, I would a... struggle because one, I don't like touching people. I'm weird like that. I am literally one of those people. Like, don't touch me. And the other thing is just small talk, man. I think that's the important thing. Um, whereas, so whereas a lot of people would be, how's the weather? Uh, we do big talk. I want to know how you're doing. I want to. All my customers are essentially friends. Some have become really good friends. Yeah. So, uh, I don't want to do how's the weather talk. I want to ask people how they're doing properly. Oh, which is good on you. Do, you. do you find many people speak to you about random stuff, even though they, they, they've never met you before? Um, I'd say I know more shit on most people than a lot of their family does. People are super open in the chair. It's a real honest space, and it's uh, one of my favourite bits about the job, I think. But why, is it, why, is it, why, why do you reckon that is? I, I've got a hunch. My hunch is this, right? We've men up. Okay, we're awareness rather than fixers, if that makes sense. We, we signpost. Um, so we're about making people question themselves or how they treat other people, and it, it does very well of that. I'm quite proud. But anyway, I digress. But I've, I've noticed when we get a message, and we're like, well, have you spoken to the people around? I don't know. They're, they're asking for help. It doesn't really matter what it is. They're asking for some help or conversation. So like, well, have you spoken to the people around you? No. And, and I, I think it's they'll speak to a complete and utter stranger. I don't know where I'm going with that one, but yeah. it's right. So, for example, I'm an impartial, an impartial third party that you know doesn't know. I know their job, I don't know where they work, I don't know their wife, their girlfriend, their kids, so they can talk to me quite openly and know it's not going to go anywhere else. Yeah, and I think well, that helps a lot. Especially if you're super open with people to start with, they reciprocate that most of the time and just also be super open with you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think it... I, 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 I'm weird, I get it. As a bloke, I get it. But on the other hand, I'm just like, well, speak to the people around you. Yeah, I, I like, I'm, I'm very similar to you. I think when people are a bit more tuned into their mental health or their mental well-being, you start to become a bit easier. But I think for a lot of guys, they're still very caged off to that. They're, they're unaware even sometimes that they might be going through some shit. They just think that's what you have to do. How, how do you mean to? I think I'm being thick. I think some people, when you explain how you feel sometimes when your depression's bad or when you're anxious, I think some guys just think that's how they have to feel when all of a sudden yeah. you realize you can, yeah. do, you can express yourself and be like, oh, no, this isn't normal feelings. This isn't, it's not normal to wake up and be sad every day or wake up and be numb every day even, which is how my depression manifests when I'm feeling really bad. I just become a bit numb to everything. And I yes. think when yes. you someone there like, oh, shit, no, I'm, I don't think I felt happy or sad for months. And I think when you someone responds with honesty, they self-evaluate a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. Do, do people say that to you then, do they? Yeah, man. Um, more, I don't know, I can count on two hands the amount of times people have been like, oh, on that last haircut, you mentioned something. And I think I'm going to do that. So I've actually gone and go see the doctor and I've actually spoken to my wife or my mum about it. So that's too peaceful. It's, it's weird. Do, do, you, do you reckon, because I, I do, I was watching, so it was either my therapist, I can't remember who said it, <clears throat> But it, 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 there's something where, let me try and process, my brain is moving like 500 million miles an hour, so I apologise. But the, the, the thing is with couples, straight or, or not straight, whatever, I don't really care. Let, let's just pick on couples for the moment. The reason a lot of the time they conflict or, that, or they, they won't talk to each other, let's face it, it's normally the bloke won't talk to the missus in 95% of the cases. Sorry, but it, that's I, I see it in the thousands. But it's because we're couples or even families, let's stick with couples yet again. So I've gone off on 
they face to face look at each other. And I, I think it was, it was I'm a therapist or something, but there's someone was there's something somewhere on the internet. I've forgotten what it is, and it triggered something. It was like if you're gonna if you're gonna speak to somebody about something personal or horror, it doesn't really matter what it is. Don't look at them face to face. Yeah, it's a very similar chair. So I'm speaking to them through a mirror most of the time. So they're and looking. That's at the them. thing. Yeah. Do, do... I think it's just surprising me where you said, you know, if you're saying like quite openly, just say, no, they won't speak, they've not been happy for a while. And because for me, I'd never say that to a hairdresser. I like, I think one, I'm a, I'm a pretty open Barber, dude. Barber, Barber, sorry. <laughs> but I think for a lot of, especially straight dudes, half an hour sat down in a chair, made to feel better about themselves. Yeah. Plus a conversation that's quite open. That combination, that cocktail of that sometimes lets them evaluate a little bit and like, oh, this dude went through this, like, and he speaks about it quite openly now and he's all right. And all of a sudden people start to break down a wall, crack a shell a little bit and like let a bit out. You know, so so, so how, how how do you bring up how do you bring up the conversation in the space of 20 minutes, half hour about mental health? Uh so I've got a lot of um around my mirror, I've got a lot of like what we all do in the shop, a lot of like men's mental health stickers um it's okay dude uh you should be able to go to therapy as easy as you can go to the gym i hope you're right mate ask me about mental health all that sort of stuff i bought a load off etsy a couple of years ago and just stuck well, all around the shop well remind me i'll send you remind me i'll send you some men at once yeah and a lot of guys will go go oh that's really cool man and i'll go yeah um or the quite often ask oh how come you got those stickers and like i said so me Everyone I work with, I think everybody's got a touch of mental illness, but we're all, we all speak so openly about it. Yeah. When you go, oh, I tried to, I was going to kill myself four years ago. People go, oh shit, what led to that? And all of a sudden, you've got a conversation going, man. Yeah, I, I, I do say, I think so, sometimes I don't mean this to sound arrogant, but I think some of the best people to talk about, I think some of the best campaigners, and I'm not on about like charity level like professional campaigners i'm on about people up, up to point okay yeah I, I guess i'm in that hole now where people like i was just normal blokes who have, have literally just been through the shite i think sometimes we're, we're people approach us because I, I think it's because they know we ain't going to judge them yeah they well they know we've been at the bottom of the barrel so there's nothing they can say to say to me is going to shock me yeah no uh, I think I think that, that I think that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, it's um. I think when you've gone through, when you've been at rock bottom, come back up, you speak honestly and openly about it, like what what's the what's the body line? Well, I think that's for, for me is I think for me is two things. Is one, I would never want man or female or other to go through that thing of picking myself up from what felt like absolute rock bottom. Yeah, if, I, if I can stop somebody, for, if I can stop somebody from jumping from the second rudder to the first rudder, I'm trying to be wise, obviously quite failed quite badly. Do, do you get me? If I can just help them just a little bit sooner, you yeah, felt the one. You don't want anyone else to feel that, so yeah, we try yeah. and here. And if we can keep them up, that's even better. But if we can just keep someone below bottom, that's a win. Yeah, no, exactly, and it, it, it's just. I don't want other people to go through that because it is it it, it it is horrible, it it really is. And obviously for me, I think sometimes speak. Don't know about yourself. Sometimes for me, like these kind of conversations, helps me in my mental health. Sometimes. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was like, I straight up, but like last week, I'm I'm super stressed at the moment. It's that yeah. time of year. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you have a conversation. You're like, oh. I've uh, undone the nozzle. I've bled the radi. I've bled the emotional radiator. Do you know what I mean? I'm feeling back to hundred percent. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, you, you said that, that it's this time of year. What what's this time of year look for? What causes you stress this time of year? I'm going to presume accounts, but <laughs> uh, like accounts are all sorted. Uh, it can be anything, isn't it? Isn't it? Sometimes it's happened later in the year. At the moment, my wife quit a job a couple months ago, so I'm the only one making money. I'm making all right money. Stuff's yeah. still getting still going now. My life hasn't changed, hasn't changed that much. Yeah, but a little bit of added pressure. Yeah, are you a high? I'm not qualified to diagnose. Are you a high functioning depressive by any chance? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so I mean, I was, because because I come under the charity arm now, I have to be re- really careful with what with, with what I say. But it's yeah. one of those things like me. I've been quite open. Yeah, I'm high functioning depressive. I'm high functioning BPD as well. The BPD, the borderline personality disorder. I don't mind that too much because I can use that as a tool. The hyper focus. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, like the ultra focus. The the, yeah. the 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 high functioning depressive stuff. That that's that's a hard that's a hard one for me sometimes when it when it just creeps up. But I think that's why I can never be a but not that I'd want to be a barber. And but for me, like how, how do you how do you put a smile on when you're feeling rough? Uh, like I said, honestly, man, a lot of the time you ride the fucking wave, dude. Like if it's good and it's good, cool. You lean into that goodness. If it's bad. I, d- I always and forever will campaign for celebrating my little victories. Woke up and made the bed. Good start to the day. Yeah. Did I, a bit bad? Get myself a delicious coffee. Two of my favourite customers in. I'm working with the boys. Nice. Just go through the day, taking a little win at a time. Bang, bang, bang. That was a really nice haircut. Win. Oh, he tipped, he tipped me 10 quid. Oh, that's a win. Do you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, you ride those little wins right at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, again, I don't want to sound true. I think that's the thing with, the, especially with the, the I hate depression. I, yeah. I, I really do. Because this, this is the thing with, with man, I've, I've had to learn to, I've had to learn to live with it. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that rarely gets completely cured and you end up just like the light gets loader sometimes and like the load gets heavier sometimes and just learning to live with it. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, you can function with this illness. It's not debilitating yeah no, absolutely. it's funny you say that actually where you refer to it as an illness yeah man like straight up the my brain doesn't make the things i need it makes me depressed yeah no no it's, it's funny you say that because i've always been quite vo- i've always been quite vocal fuck me i started a charity i've always been quite vocal about that but I, i've never i've never called myself I've never called my depression the bit the BPD whatever. I'm just that's just that's a part of my my identity. Or if you Google it, many of them. Um, but, <laughs> sorry, but really bad joke for for me. Okay. Um, but it's just the, the depression. I've never referred to it as an illness. Actually, it is. It is just that, isn't it? Yeah, man. It's like uh, living with asthma. Do you know what I mean? It's just something I have that I medicate myself for. Yeah, like no, most... I got that as well. Yeah. <laughs> medicate myself for most illnesses and sometimes i need to readjust that medication if i'm super high super low one of those things yeah no it's, i'm it's very rare that i'm lost for words but actually yeah yeah you you pretty much pretty much there but yeah may, maybe we need to change some of our terminology old man up actually because we do say yeah learn to live with it because sometimes we have to look most of the time we have to learn with learn to live with whatever mental health or mental health illness because they are two that totally different things yep. yeah and just to say depression is well it is an illness yeah man and i think sometimes people can cure themselves that illness and they hit a real low and then a year later they're never gonna have to deal with it but mine's very much like riding a wave sometimes good sometimes bad yeah so how do you i think you've already answered it about your little how do you how do you actually get yourself out of bed to do because you know that I can only speak from my perspective. When you're just like, I'm done, borderline burnt out. When when you just when it just, when you get them days where you just like, I can't get out of this. But how do you how do you get that foot out? Well, I think I think sometimes most importantly, I don't, and I'm like, cool. Today I'm gonna take this day to myself to just be. Do you know what I mean? And live in it. But like I said, I'm a firm believer in little victories every day, man. Wake up and make the bed. First victory. Make myself my favourite coffee. Second victory. That's two wins to one loss already. And then then get to work. I love my shop. I think it looks cool. But then my best mate comes in because I work next to him. That's four victories to one loss. And then by the end of the day, you're at 50 to one. You've won. Yeah. Well, well I'll tell you one thing. I don't know if you've seen like that otter.ai thing, right? That transcribes everything with, that we talk about because I nick those and then use them for. Yeah. I use it, you know, them little me, me quote things as well. Yeah. It helps keep the page more active. I'm just my ugly mug all over it. Um, thanks for that, mate. I think you're giving us about five years worth of content there. So cheers <laughs> for that. <laughs> so I know you. So you're looking to do an awareness event thing again, aren't you? 
yeah, so from the 1st of February, uh, alongside cutting hair, I also sell some beard stuff. And I'm going to launch on the 1st of February, simultaneously, a sponsored head shave and a all-for-profit beard balm. Everything to be donated to you guys. I appreciate that, man. I do appreciate that. So, so... My goal, my absolute pinnacle, if I can raise a £1,000 this year for men's mental health, cool. That's, that's, that's 10 victories to one loss, man. Yeah, no, abs- absolutely. And I think now I feel bad for saying about before the, the Zoomy thing. Obviously, we, we all we always appreciate anyone who's going to help out financially, we really do. But it's, I do have that BPD wall where it's just like, oh, what, what are they after? For, for, for us, it's, it's more about that awareness, mate. Well, and I think for both of you, luckily enough, I've like, I have a customer base of a thousand men who will yeah. all read the message I'm going to put out with keep your conversation going check on your friends tell you yeah. tell your friends you love them some some boys never hear that every day and that's fucked to me i like i tell my mates i love them when i first see them i want to say goodbye every single time man so if i can get if if 20 people buy whatever that's 20 people that got the message and then they they'll tell another person and then all of a sudden we've got this net of just people talking just around the subject that i just happen to be raising money for yeah, no, absolutely. And do, do you know what? That's something I'm quite, I'm quite proud of with my own. I ain't no super dad, far, far, far from it. Do you get what I mean? But the one thing I'm proud of is with my, with my boys. Every time I get they get kicked them out of the car or pit or what, it doesn't matter. Before I say goodbye to them, even if it's a good night, it doesn't really matter. I always tell them I love them. Yeah, man. I uh, there's there's not a friend that I have that won't tell you if you ask them how does I say goodbye. He says bye, I love you. Oh, you say that to just anyone? I say it to all of my friends. I say it to strangers. I say it to the guy at the shop that was really nice to me. Because sometimes that's all it takes to stop someone doing themselves in that day, man. I've never... Did you did you put that in the message once? Um, Maybe. I don't know. So I'll break it down for you. The day I draw my money out, wrote my suicide note, on my way to where I was going, someone texted me and went, I hope you're doing all right, mate. Love you. And it stopped being my tracks. So, so, say that again, sorry. Because I, I was looking at the message, so I was being a bit rude. Yeah. So I apologise. So, so, what the fuck? What? So, the day I went to kill myself, I had all my money drawn out of the bank account. I had a note writ. I got a taxi somewhere where I was going to do it. And just one of my friends, who I love, who's brilliant, was one of the best men in my wedding, takes me saying, hope you're doing all right, mate. Love you. And that stopped me in my tracks. I span around and went home. That's incredible, man. So, I'll say that to everyone every day, man. Stop me. I literally have no idea how to respond to that, but well, well, well done to you. Well, well done to you, mate. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'll, I'll be thankful for doing. He's like, I don't like. So I talk about this story quite a lot, and I never, I'll never mention his name because that's a lot of pressure to have on someone, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I like that's a that's a debt I can't repay. Yeah. So I'll repay it by telling ten people a day I love him. And yeah. then those people, oh, I'm gonna tell my mate I love him, yeah. and then we go. And I, and I, th- I think this is this is when it comes down to mental health, and I get really frustrated. And I should I should know better. Man up's now been a chat a full charity for 18, 18 months. We're about to do a load of paperwork, which I've no idea what to do, but we, yeah, we've got it. Um, but that's the thing is just we, we we need to stop saying, we need to stop telling blokes. Or even women sometimes. This is how you deal with whatever mental health. This is how you deal with that bloke because everyone's so so different. And I think yeah, what I'm trying to say it's, is, it's when, not, when, there's not a right answer. No, and that, but that's the thing. But when you said, "Oh, you t- you t- t- I'm just being, I'm just completely honest. When you first said, oh, "I'll tell everybody I love them," I, I misheard. I think that's why I asked you to repeat that because I thought you were like, "Oh, your children." Like, oh, that, that's nice. I'll do the same. But when you said anybody, I'm, I must. I was just like. Bit, bit weird because it's just not the kind of thing what a a bloke would do but now because i've decided to go actually i want to hear this out a bit more now i get it there's a story behind it and do you know what so i've gone from within two seconds of listening to you they're thinking a bit weird though you just tell anybody friends strangers whatever else that you love them now now i get it because i've taken two seconds now i get it 
And if that helps your mental health and there's a knock-on effect of... If I can say it to a stranger, someone else can. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. But it is, and if that works for you, it's not wrong. No. Sometimes, man, literally, it's all it took me to stay around. And cool, if it worked for me, it might work for someone else. If I try it a thousand times, it helps one person. I won. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I can't argue. I can't argue with that, man. I, I, I think that's, I've gone from thinking, okay, a bit weird to, I, I get it. Yeah, again, if that works for you, sorry, I'm just repeating. No, man. He's, he, he's not broken. Do, do you know what I mean? I think that that's, that was saying in a bad way. We, we need to stop of the, this checklist. Yeah, this man, is, like, it, it, it's, it's not a, there's not one answer. There's yeah, infinite yeah. people with an infinite problem. Yeah. Absolutely. So before before we draw to a close, this is a little cue where we're like, okay, done the twenty minutes. So let let's let let we've got a piss off now. But if I think you've already answered, but if somebody's watching this and they're I don't know, they're triggered up to a point feeling suicidal. We we don't talk about suicide that much on Man Up because we try to nip it in the bud early before that sets it in the mind. And we've always been quite vocal that if somebody's that far gone, I don't mean how that sounds, but that's the only way I can say it. They need medical attention. Yeah, uh, like, and uh, to be fair, is what I had to do. So after that, I took six months out of work. And... Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. We're, we're not qualified yeah. to talk. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not qualified to talk. It's, but anyway, I, I don't want to digress. So if someone's watching this, I don't know, feeling down, depressed, but it doesn't really matter what it is. What, what would you, what would you say them to do? I think when you, when you've said to yourself, "I am ill. I am poorly. I am depressed." You've got to speak to a friend, a mum, a work colleague, just anyone, because that will lighten your burden immediately. You're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And once you've and once you've stopped holding it all in, you have lightened your load. Yeah. Absolutely. And then then after a while, we're all carrying an equal, easy to manage load. Yeah. And there's not one person with the weight on the the world on their shoulders anymore. And that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, do you, do you, that's the thing, isn't it? You don't need to offload everything. You just need to release a little valve to let off a bit of pressure. Yeah, because otherwise you're a boiling point, man, and you'll get ready to pop. No, absolutely. So look, just before we do, before I do kick you off, I mean that in a nice way, you, obviously I have to do the whole stalky thing on social media just to make sure you're not like a secret neo-Nazi and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? I've, I have to do the, my due diligence, can never say that word. You're a big lad covered in tattoos. Yep. Has anybody ever judged you about you talking about your mental health? No, I wouldn't care if they did. That, that's a, that, that's a, that's a valid point. But that first time when you're like being a bit more open about it, did anybody actually judge you? No, no one. No one's ever judged me for speaking out about mental health. I've only ever been praised for it. I'm gonna end. The, I'm gonna end the zoomy on that. Right. Thank you for having me. Let Let me do the recordy thing. Bear me one second, right?